All we have in life we have as a gift from God. Let us never, ever forget it. As we come here together on this day of grace to stand up for religious liberty, we possess an obvious sense of unity and commitment among us regarding the urgent need we face to safeguard religious liberty inherent in the dignity of the human person. We stand here with the resolve to stand up, speaking up in a concerted effort to protect a key principle of our country. His Eminence, Cardinal Dolan, the Archbishop of New York and President of the Conference of Catholic Bishops, refers to this key principle as one that has been enshrined in the Constitution, further enumerated in the First Amendment, and explicitly extended to all United States citizens. The framers of the Constitution themselves understood this first freedom to be based on the norms inherent in natural law, namely that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights and that among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. My dear friends, the current Health and Human Services mandate is a leading example of just how this basic right in its many and varied applications for people of faith is in unprecedented ways under assault in the United States of America. We stand here today united with faithful Americans across the nation sharing a common and compelling responsibility to proclaim the truth of religious freedom for all and so to protect people from this assault, which now appears to grow at an ever accelerating pace in ways most of us could never have imagined. But we know as we stand here with one another, praise be to God, there is no grounds for losing hope. <laughs> Last year, the United States Department of Health and Human Services, led by Secretary Kathleen Sebelius, issued the rule which forced almost all private health plans to cover sterilization procedures, contraceptive drugs, including many drugs that cause early abortion. In response to this, I join other national Catholic leaders speaking out against this unacceptable and objectionable mandate. In October, I was one of the first 20 national Catholic leaders to sign our open letter to administration officials and members of Congress defining our position. Make no mistake, we strongly support access to life-affirming health care for everyone and the ability of secular and religious groups and individuals to provide and receive such care. No one endeavoring to play a vital role in providing health care and needed services should have to violate their consciences or severely curtail life-affirming health care. To require people of faith to do this is a full frontal attack on religious freedom and access to health care. We have stated time and again the health and human services mandate places us in an untenable position. It harms society as a whole by undermining the long American tradition of respect for religious liberty and freedom of conscience. In a pluralistic society, our health care system should respect the religious and ethical convictions of all. Yeah. We are in support of health care reform. In fact, the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops have always been in favor of the idea. However, we are inconsolably opposed to the law as it is written. The fact yeah. 
the fact remains that the law is unjust. It violates the Constitution, and it is our prayerful hope that we will prevail in the United States Supreme Court. Let us keep ever before us that universal care should cover everybody. It should never kill anybody. As some of you may be aware, I was honored to have been invited to the White House by the President this past April with a number of theologians, pastors, priests, religious, and lay leaders from various denominations. As the leader of the Knights of Peter Claver Catholic Fraternal Organization, I have a moral obligation to promote civic improvement and social justice. Leading a truly Catholic apostolate of the laity, I have an indispensable responsibility in the mission of evangelization. There were some Catholics and non-Catholics who had heard me speak out against the HHS mandate, who were greatly disturbed that I was there in the White House. Each of us has a responsibility and a moral obligation to follow the tenets of our respective faiths and to bear witness in all we do. acceptable time for religious action and people of faith to stand to be heard. We need lay leaders to step up to their responsibilities to speak for those who have no one to speak for them. Let today be the first day in seizing every opportunity to bring your faith to the public square. In no way. In no way should you be made to shut up, be quiet. No way. When the opportunity presents itself for you to come to the table, just choose your seat and sit down. In no way do we agree with every public policy decision of the government. Regardless of one's political leanings, each of us has an obligation to promote the more difficult right as opposed to the easy wrong. We have an obligation to make known our principles when leaders consider policy issues. We should never dodge or wriggle out of an invitation to sit down at the table for any discussion concerning the welfare of the whole people of God. Not just some of the people, but the whole people of God in spite of everything. And I come from my Christian background as illustrated by Jesus Christ in sacred scripture. Everybody is my neighbor. As I close, I leave with you the invitation to pray for all leaders of government, whether you like them or you don't. Yes. We must continue to ask the God of wisdom and justice, through whom authority is rightly administered, to assist with counsel and fortitude the president and all government leaders. Let us continue in keeping with the instruction given in the first epistle to Timothy to pray for our nation, to pray for the president, and to pray for all in authority. May God bless you all.